go to this location, and then you, do your, you dig right there. You, you, you dig out some type of a known reference, as I described in, in February, and, and, and then that's the only area that you're going to bridge. Atmel <coughs> Secure AVR. Anybody used an Atmel Secure AVR in the past? This is an older Secure AVR. This is a 350 nan uh, nanometer, I think it's uh, three, three metals. Uh, it's a nice chip. It's only flash with EEPROM, and then it has it has a bootloader that they load into their flash that you can overwrite later. It's got a crypto coprocessor and when I first looked at it, I thought that this was actually some type of boot ROM. And so I analyzed it, but it wasn't, they weren't, they were not AVR opcodes. It's some type of, of, um, of custom CPU that they've designed for crypto for their PKI. And so it's just kind of neat. Again, it's, a, it's an image from the, from the fib. So the 6464 looks like this. Now this is wrong. These were comments I made in the very beginning and this is not a bootstrap ROM, you know, or a bootloader. <clears throat> what this actually is, is the crypto ROM. And this is what it looks like, you know, before it's stripped down. And then the other picture you saw was when it's been delayed to the, to the very bottom of the chip basically. The instruction registers, Atmel is missed, they've missed the boat here. So Atmel thinks, ha ha ha, you know, that we've covered the EEPROM and the flash because they're under this. So if you want to, you know, they're going to probe this, and they're going to tell you we've encrypted it and we've buried it under metal. So get through it. Well, guess what? I can get right through it. In fact, um, while I'm on this topic here, I'll open another folder. Give me one second. I think these are the holes. I was playing around with UV one night a long time ago in 2003. And uh, here's an example. So much for that ground plane that it might, be, it might even be VCC, I have no idea, but it's probably grounded. And so here you can see this chip still ran when I was finished. So there was, there I, here I used a laser and I used it with green. Any, anybody here ever work with laser cutters? This is where they come in useful even if it's like, a th you know, smaller than, than 350. You get solid planes of metal like this, they're perfect. And so here I used UV but it just, it wasn't good enough. So then I used green but it was too low of a power. So here I used, green and then I used UV to finish the job and then I actually hit it, hit the, these two power planes, VD, v, you know, VDD or VPP, I guess it's VPP and probably ground or something uh, inside the chip and I put a needle on it. And this was just a, like a, a, pr a proof of practice, uh, you know, so these techniques are very important. You learn, you know, like I might show you something that's on a 1990 chip but you, if you think about it, it's probably usable still today. So the chip, this chip, you look at it and you're like, well, where are the instruction registers? So does anybody have any idea how, we've, how, how to find them? Anybody? Come on, somebody. Cost and null. Yavol. But this is an AVR. It has 16 flip-flops of the common clock. So basically we start to strip the chip down. We strip it layer by layer. Top metal, strip it off. Actually, one of them you're going to leave it alone. Maybe you'll polish it down a little bit, you know, to get rid of some of the passivation. Sometimes the, the, um, the dye will look clearer in your images if you, if, you, if you mill it for a little bit on a lapping machine. Just lap it down a little bit. Uh, remove a few microns of the, uh, of the passivation, that very top oxide. So you strip this down layer by layer and then you, you, do, you do photo mosaics of the areas where you think they might be and you're looking for, you're looking for some flip flops that are going to have a common clock. Now you know these flip flops are not going to be in the middle of this. They could be but they're probably not going to be because what, what you've got an instruction register here that has to decode and trickle out into, to decode every instruction the AVR has. And there's like 133 instructions or 132 instructions in an AVR. So the, lat the instruction registers or the instruction latches, depending how they've designed it, are going to be somewhere near the edge typically. And this is not for sure 100 percent, but I will almost guarantee you you'll find them quickly if you look, on a, look near the edge. But Atmel brags in their toes, uh, the common criteria evaluations, that this is all encrypted. So even if you sat on, on the EEPROM or the, or the um, or the RAM or any of these RAMs, you're not going to understand anything because everything's encrypted. But what they don't tell you is encryption to them is a few, a few bit swaps, some inverses and an XOR, things like this. It's really silly today. I mean, no one truly is doing real, true, hardcore, you know, uh, DES decryption. How, and really, if you think about it, how can they? Because you're dealing with, you know, 
let's say four byte fetch. That's the max pretty much you're going to deal with on, a, on an 8 bit CPU. Four bytes are fetched maximum for, for some instruction. Typical instructions, one bit, one bit. And also you have the trade off of time. How, you know, you can trickle through logic and it adds a propagation delay to, uh, to the, the, you know, to the circuit. And that becomes your maximum uh, clock frequency you can run at. But to really do like 16 rounds of DES, y you know, it's not happening on, on any of these small processors. So here if you look on the side, Atmel talks about 72 lines coming out of the chip for debug testing. Well these 72 lines are right here down on poly. So Atmel says, oh you can't get too many more. We've, we've sawed them off the wafer after production. Well they've sawed them off, they're right here. Then you can get to them with a fib. But if you follow these, they come to what is basically a mux. And so at one of these lines that had a pull up on it actually determined if you were going to run code from the outside world or run code from the onboard flashes. And this is how Atmel serializes their, their flash for the first time to install this bootloader. Because how else are they going to get it in unless they're probing the die? But there's, there's metal. The top metal is covering the entire surface. So they come up with this really cool idea, but it was a really bad idea. Because guess what's near these lines? The instruction register. So right in this area is the Atmel 3232, 6464, 7272, CC, whichever version of it, whichever flavor, find this area and right in this area uh, from the edge will be, will be your magic 16 flip flops. The irony here too is look how close to the edge you are on this chip. Every chip you're always near the edge somewhere and everything on this side of it has to do, everything down here has to do with EEPROM and flash encryption. Everything here on the side has to do with decryption of the fetch. The opcode's decrypted and then it's latched. Does anybody have questions? Can I say that please? Say, show you one where I've what? I've never failed. <laughs> That's <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so I would I say again? What what? Hi. What, what about DESFIRE and the new NXP pretend to be high secure uh, ships like the DESFIRE 8? I've never seen it. I don't know. But the DES, I have DESFIRE chips from, from back in the old uh, Crypto One era when Mr. Noel was, Dr. Noel was working on it. And so I have frozen DESFIRES that are on like two, 250 nanometer process. Um, but with a, with a SEM or a FIB, it doesn't matter how small they, they go, you're still only as, as secure as Metal One. So if, you know, I shouldn't say metal one even. I should say the the, si the width of the track. So the chips, you know, they can go to 10 nanometers. I, I don't care. I can still see it, and I can still touch their metal. Their metal tracks will never be 10 nanometers wide. That's actual gate. And so the the metal tracks typically are are 30, uh, 300 nanometers, 400 nanometers, 500 nanometers, and and up. Any any smaller, I, I haven't seen. What do you know your track width on like a 45 nanometer process? No, it's going to be small, but I, I have a feeling it's it's going to it's, it's going to be at least 100 nanometers. I, I've just never seen one uh, to really compare. So so here you can see now these these bits were these bits were figured out because you know I, I know C, I've been into I've been into computers since I was like nine years old. So I've had a computer since like 78, and basically I've written in like every language you can think of. Except, I, except the arm, ironically en enough, it's so popular. I, I know it only as much as I need to. But um, so I, I love the AVR. I love it a lot. And um, so if you have to know the languages of these chips. That's something I didn't say before. So knowing the language of these chips, I, 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 you learn to recognize the way the order the bits should go. Now this was completely randomly placed, and you know, so bit six ended up here. Bit seven, bit one, bit five, bit ten, bit zero, bit eight, bit eleven, and it's just deduct you have to deduce it. You have to you know study it and look at it and and take it out. You know take a take a run, take a run, take a run. And honestly, on a sixteen bit pro processor, it's a pain in the butt. It really is. And uh, there's other challenges too that I'm not even going to get into, like internal clock when they come out of resets thing and sync things like this. Um, but what I want to show you about this picture what, that's the, that's important to me is. Is I've written all over it, but you didn't see it yet. That's why I opened it in Photoshop. So we got an ugly poly layer here. So use nice tools like Karsten Knoll's D-Gate. 
uh, things like this, and you can you can study the flip flops pretty easily, or you can find them on your own. I'm not. I try to use Seagate, and I don't have success early, but we're going to work on that. <laughs> so. Um, you can see here you've got a bunch of flip flops, but these flip flops are different. They're very unique in the in the in the architecture. Now finding these took a while. It it probably I would say took like a month. But this is the first time that I went after one something like this. So it's not it's tricky. So that's poly, you get your metal one, now you have your metal two, and then if you want, you have ugly metal three, but I'll I won't I'm not gonna turn it on. So now you start to add things. Now let's add D0 trace. There's the D0 trace. So D0 on, off. You can see it. Now if we do turn on metal three, and now you follow D0, look at that, it's coming out on top metal. What if I told you that every one of the data bus bits comes to top metal? You can hit this chip with a laser. You do not need a fib to attack this, any of those older Atmel's uh, smart cards. When I told Atmel, they laughed. They said, oh, that's old. I said, it doesn't matter. You're as strong as your weakest link. This gives me an indoor to the AVR architecture um, that, 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 today's, that, their, that today's platform is built upon. So they don't just make something from scratch. Yes, they do, you know, in the very early days. And then they build, and they build again, and they build again. They don't knock the house down and start over. And um, so you learn a lot from the old, you learn a lot by studying their older technologies. But anyway, all the traces came up to top metal, and you can turn them on, and it's pretty wild. Uh, let me zoom out. So as you can see. So it, it really, I really wonder, I hear these guys all the time that they, they say, you know, oh, Video Cipher 2 Plus can't be hacked, and, and uh, Nogger 3 can't be hacked, and DirecTV can't be hacked, and blah, blah, blah. And anything can be hacked with enough effort. And, and, and someone that's motivated and focused. And I'm not saying that DirecTV or, ND or Nagara or anybody is going to be hacked, you know, but, but they could be in theory. They're not, they're not as strong as you'd think they are, they, that you'd think they are. So we go back to this general instruments chip. Anybody familiar with the GI video cipher system? So it got cracked back in, I guess, the early 80s. And then uh, they came out with the 2 Plus. Never got cracked, at least not that I'm aware of. And I don't, I don't know why. I really don't. The chip might have been custom, but it was some type of a, a TI um, MSP4, um, like a TMS370 type chip. And so you look at it, and you've got you've, you've got some non-volatile memory here. You've got some static RAM. You've got more static RAM. And then here's the core, and look what we see here. What's this? Who can say what this is? I discussed this before. Micro or PLA, one of the two. So it's instruction registers are somewhere in this area, they're, and they're right here. So you, there's your eight registers. Freeze the latch, dump the whole chip. And, and, then, and then there's other, I think there's probably some other challenges. There may be an ASIC in here too, I, I, don't, I don't know. But the chip's geometry was humongous. And uh, the guys were cocky too. They put a, little, uh, put a little rocket ship on it. So it says, <laughs> Team Bonsai. I, I, it's funny, some of the things you see, you know, S, ST puts frogs on all their chips and these guys put, you know, Team Bonsai. So. And uh, if we zoom in a little closer, uh, I just wanted to show you the Bonsai logo a little bit closer. But what's ironic here is I can tell that this is made by TI. This is, looks exactly like the older TI chips. You can tell the footprint, the way the process is laid, who makes the chip. Like I can spot TSMC any day, any time, on, on like the 250 nanometer process and the 350 nanometer process. And it's interesting because once I study their flash on one, it's the same on the others that use that same type of flash. Maybe it's 16 bits though instead of 8 bits. It just, it just depends. So here's a 200 power resolution image of the, uh, of the instruction registers. So you have eight flip flops sitting right here. You have one here and there's an output here if you can see it on the screen. Here's another one. Now does anybody, what, can anybody tell me what they see in this image? Something, there's something weird about this image. Anybody see what's, see what's special about this? There's metal, there's a top layer of metal put over this area. So this was done on purpose. These guys knew that this was a weakness in the chip. And so th they, they covered this on purpose. So you can't get to it without digging a hole through it first. So this was, these were very early methods of, of protecting uh, what they deemed a valuable you know, area of the, you know, of the chip, sacred area. And, um, and here you can see, this is, one of these is like set and reset for, for, the, for the flip flop. And so 
you just check them, and the one that's 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 holding the the opcode when it's low, stable, is the one that you wanna that you wanna freeze. And so there's your eight bits. There's two more, and there's two more. If you sat on the data bus, right?